It's right here, bud. Where's your daddy? Andrew Lynn had already survived a tour of duty in Iraq and being hit by a drunk driver. Then, while driving late at night, he fell asleep at the wheel and hit a chain link fence. A fence pole went through the windshield and then through his mouth, narrowly missing his spine and puncturing clear through the back of his neck. They started taking him out of the car and they put him on a stretcher and as they came around the corner, my wife says, hey, he's got a pipe sticking out his head. When the paramedics uh, came, I guess they thought I was you know, deceased, and I wasn't, clearly, so um, they started working to cut cut the pipe to get me out. Um, when I was cut free, um, from what they've told me, I actually climbed out of the car and hopped onto the gurney uh, all by myself, which I'm sure was a little trippy. <laughs> Andrew was transported to the UMC Trauma Center with the pool still going through his head. He had a hard time kind of wrapping his head around it, no pun intended, uh, about what had really happened to him and what he had been through. And, uh, you know, when I had talked to him about the part about how he was trying to text on his telephone, he couldn't remember any of it. Dr. Coates had to figure out how to get that pole out of Andrew's mouth and neck not something doctors learn in medical school. The minute you pull this pipe out, uh, you know, all hell could break loose and they could start bleeding uh, profusely. So we called in a team of specialists only on call at UMC to figure out how to get that pole out of Andrew. In fact, the whole team at UMC came together in trauma OR, even down to a hospital engineering team who had to bring a saw to sever a smooth edge and a nurse who ran ice cold water through that pipe so it didn't heat up in Andy's head while they were sawing. So that was really the concern was, you know, uh, whether or not he was gonna have permanent injury from lack of blood flow to his brain, and we were very fortunate that uh, he didn't. Dr. Nancy Donahoe and Dr. Jeffrey Moxley assisted Dr. Coates during a case none of them could believe. If Andy's car had been going in any of three different planes of space, he would likely be dead at the scene. If the pole had ever been coming in any of three different planes of space, he's dead at the scene. Um, and if his head had been positioned inside of the car in any of three different planes of space, he's dead at the scene. The specialists were able to get the pole out of Andrew, left unscathed except for some oral issues, but alive. It took a long time to be able to open my mouth again because with the damage to the muscle and the tissue, um, it's almost like my mouth healed shut because it was wired shut, and those muscles healed in the shut position. So I actually had to pry my mouth open over time with popsicle sticks, or the tongue depressors. You'd stick them in, a stack of them in between my teeth on this side, and then I would wedge another one in between the middle and pry it open. Andrew's injuries now were cosmetic. Miraculously, he was able to stand up and walk just two days after that pole came out of his head. Uh, especially, if I felt horrible sitting in the intensive care unit because you see people who are really in bad shape. And I, I remember, you know, feeling really bad about seeing people in, in that bad of shape. Andrew's case made national attention because of his incredible injury and the superb team who saved his life. I, I tend to believe that there's a, just a higher power at work there. Um, I remember Dr. Moxley, one of the things he told me was he couldn't have surgically put that pipe in any better than it was. Uh, how do you explain that he's even alive, Doctor? Oh, it's a miracle. It really is.